Okay, so now we're ready to install uh, Bitcoin um, onto our Ubuntu machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll go into Firefox uh, and we will go into bitcoincore.org slash en slash download. Uh, and we will download Bitcoin Core, the Linux version. It's going to download into our downloads folder. So we'll just download that. And also we want to verify release signatures. So we're going to download that and it asks you here to verify your download. Um, download verification is optional but highly recommended um, and we're going to do that the procedures for the Linux um, uh, operating system so we've downloaded Bitcoin okay and we now need to download the list of cryptographic checksums okay so we'll download that save that into the same directory uh, as Bitcoin now open a terminal in command line prompt and change directory to the folder you use for downloads. Okay, so we know what to do there. So CD downloads. Okay, verify the checksum of the release is listed in the checksums file using the following command. So we'll take this command and we'll copy it and we'll paste it into there. ASC didn't copy and paste it. Okay, so it says okay. Um, but you must ensure the output lists okay. So we've got that there. Obtain a copy of the release signing key by running the following command. So we'll copy that and paste that. The output of the command should say that one key was imported, updated and new signatures sorry has new signatures or remain unchanged so it's there imported one and verify that the checksums file is pgb signed by the release sign key so copy that and paste that in okay check the output from the above command for the following text a line that starts with gpg good signature GPG good signature. Uh, a complete line saying primary key fingerprint that. And I can see that there. Okay. And that matches with that. So the output from the verify command may contain a warning that the key is not or certified with a trusted signature. This means that to fully verify your download, you need to ask people you trust to confirm that the key fingerprint printed above belongs to the Bitcoin Core project's release sign key. So basically, um, I'm fairly familiar with that with that key, so I'm okay with it, okay? Um, now, I have now verified that this download that is in here is um, legitimately from the Bitcoin Core uh, contributors. Okay, so now we are going to install Bitcoin, okay, uh, on our machine. So I'm going to go to another section or another website, bitcoin.org slash en slash full node, and that will give me a nice tutorial. Uh, Linux instructions and we will go down very similar um, uh, instructions for uh, verifying the download but now we've actually got commands to essentially uh, install 
this onto our machine. So the first command is tar, T A R uh, X Z F, which basically means if you're familiar with WinZip, basically unzip uh, what's in this file here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to paste um, that in, and then because I've downloaded uh, 19 and this is only 18 here, we're just going to hit tab and that will fill out the rest of the um, the line there. So we're going to do that. So do that. And then you'll notice straight away that there is now a folder called Bitcoin 0.19 or 0.19. Um, so we will uh, press on. And then all it says is to um, install this as root. So we're going to copy this line and we're going to paste it through. The thing is though, uh, this is not correct because it's not 18 that we're installing. This is a little bit out of date. Um, so we're going to hit tab there and that will fill out everything that we need. And we're going to type in our password. Okay. So that basically is it for the installation procedures for Bitcoin. Um, now we move on to running it. Now we have two options here. We can go down the GUI method um, or we can go down the path of um, the CLI. Now obviously my preference is CLI uh, but many um, would obviously choose the, um, the GUI. Now we're going to get familiar with the CLI instead. Um, so I'm going to uh, go into um, my home folder. Uh, as I said, we've got the hidden files shown so I can show you what's exactly happening and what's mirroring up here. Now, the um, if you are using another hard drive to store the blockchain data, um, the blockchain data is currently sitting at around 280 gigabytes. Um, so you may not want it installed on this particular hard drive where all your stuff is. You might want to go to another hard drive um, where you can install that. So back in your MNT somewhere file. Um, so if you're doing that, I would recommend that you do that in the GUI. So the way that you access the GUI is Bitcoin um, D. Is it Bitcoin QT? Yeah, it's just Bitcoin dash QT. Or really, what it should be is uh, USR local bin QT. So you can copy that and paste that command in, and that will work um, in there. Okay. But for me, I am going to um, install this on this hard drive. Um, so in my home folder, and it will actually create a brand new folder called dot. Bitcoin. It'll be hidden though. And the way that I'm going to do that is, so you'll see if, if you're going down the graphical um, path, then you can use a custom data directory and that could be somewhere else. Um, but for, for this purpose, we're going with um, just the normal default directory, which is uh, your home folder dot Bitcoin. So we're going to do that. Now, the way that you can do that is just running this command here. So, Bitcoin D daemon. So, copy, paste, open. Okay, and it'll say straight away, Bitcoin Core is starting. And you'll notice uh, that now in the, um, in the graphical interface, you'll see that uh, a new folder has been created called .bitcoin. And this will have all the blocks and um, it'll store all the data and it's currently now synchronizing up. So we'll go out of the downloads folder and we'll look into here and we'll see obviously that dot bitcoin file. So we'll go into dot bitcoin and we can see that same thing here. Okay. Now there's also hidden folders in here as well, which you can see. So for example, the dot cookie file, and I'll explain that a little bit later as well. But for now, um, essentially, this is now running in the background, okay? Uh, and it is downloading the blocks onto into this folder here, okay? Now, the way that you'd interact with Bitcoin 
um, is essentially go, okay, there are commands that you should get familiar with and there's plenty there. So Bitcoin CLI, uh, one of mine is to see if I'm connected to the number of, uh, to uh, how many nodes I'm connected to. You can go to get connection count. Okay. And it shows that I'm connected to six other peers on the network and I'm constantly downloading from them as well. Now, the way that I would see how much um, or how far progressed I am on that download and on that synchronization, um, essentially what you're doing is you're downloading the entire history of Bitcoin from scratch. Um, so since inception in 2009, so every single transaction you are downloading. And as I said, it it's currently sitting at 280 kilobytes. So to get to where sort of what your progression is through that download, you can type in Bitcoin CLI, get blockchain info. Okay. And if you scroll up a little bit, it'll show you um, how many blocks you've downloaded. At this point, none. Headers. Uh, now, this number here is actually falls short of the number of headers that are currently um, happening. It's actually, at this point in time, it's around 608,000. So, and then you can see here the verification progress, and that's a percentage. Um, so you can um, verify how far along the chain or how far along you have to go as a percentage, and then whether it's an initial block download which it is, so it's true, okay? So if I keep, um, so remember that up key, I can redo that, and so if I do that again, you can see that I am now progressed to 516 as opposed to 422,000. So I'm expecting this to go up to 600,000 and then it'll start downloading all the blocks from there. So that's what is expected to happen. Um, and so we'll do so it's downloading at the moment. Now going back to my get connection count, I've now got eight peers. So um, that's kind of where it maxes out. I think the max is now 10, but I have seen um, eight as the norm. Um, but now I think norm is also 10. So Okay, so let's have a look at where I am on this block. Um, on this blockchain. So yeah, now I've started downloading. Okay, so I've downloaded eight hundred. Uh, sorry, eight thousand four hundred eighty-two out of the six hundred eight thousand, uh, almost six hundred nine thousand that I need to download. Okay, and here is that uh, verification progress, one point seven six percent. Okay, so that's going to take some time. That'll take. A while depending on the hard hardware you have and your internet connection so just keep that in mind you may need to wait overnight for this thing to sync up to the chain tip so to speak um, so that's basically where um, it stands now I'm going to stop this so if you can stop this you can go Bitcoin CLI stop and it'll say um, the Bitcoin core is stopping and it will also write some new files and it'll, and the cookie file will also disappear. But as soon as you um, uh, start it up again with Bitcoin D daemon, um, then it'll start up in the background. If you don't want it to start up in the background, you can just type in, um, uh, so if you want to see it, so you can go Bitcoin D and this will now show everything um, and, and all the downloads and everything that's happening um, whilst it's uh, live, so to speak. So if you want this hidden away in the background, then you'd run the daemon. If you want to see this download um, and how much I am downloading right now uh, and verifying, that is what's happening there. Now to get out of that, it's just control C. So any process um, that you see that is hogging up the terminal, so to speak, um, you can just press control C and that will cancel out of there. And that's just shut Bitcoin down now as well. Um, now, the other thing is, is I'll show you the graphical interface now. So if you just go into Bitcoin QT, you can fire this up. And so now you can see there's a nice little icon. It's all looking good. 
it'll show you how far um, and it's very nice and you know uh, colorful so to speak um, we're gonna hide that I'll show you a little bit about what's going on in the actual um, GUI so to speak um, so we've got you can create a wallet you can open a wallet um, and here's your wallet you can send you can receive um, and there's also um, uh, transactions here for your history uh, and you can generate uh, addresses and so forth okay so here for example I've just created an address um, and yeah um, it's a very basic wallet um, and it doesn't have advanced features so for example one of the um, things that it, you can't do at the moment is hook up your hardware wallet to your Bitcoin core node um, so to uh, I guess remedy that um, we're going to use what's known as Electrum um, and Electrum server um, so we'll do that a bit later but this is now just synchronizing away um, and you can see or you, you feel free to just explore around whilst it downloads you can see the peer information as well so there's your IP addresses that you're connected to um, there's actually a lot lot of information here that you can sort of um, have a look through okay um, yeah here are all the command line options um, that I referred to earlier there are a lot of command line um, options and so you can just explore through uh, there's plenty there uh, the other thing is that if you have the Bitcoin GUI open, obviously I can't do anything in this terminal because it's um, it's hogged up. But uh, if I open up here and I try and and do the the daemon, um, then it won't lock, meaning it, you can't run the GLI and the CLI at the same time. So um, see it won't let me um, so if I type in Bitcoin CLI get connection count it's just not gonna work okay because that's because the graphical interface is in play so I'd have to exit that and then open it back up again um, like so okay so this is now just gonna um, open up again in the background and we're gonna leave it like this Uh, okay, so the other thing um, that this particular uh, folder contains or should contain is a bitcoin.conf um, folder and what that does is it allows us to have some sort of additional configurations. So one of the cool configurations that we should do at the moment is uh, uh, two commands basically run it as a server and also um, uh, index all of the transactions so we're going to stop Bitcoin so Bitcoin CLI stop okay so that's stopped it and then in your Bitcoin uh, dot Bitcoin folder we're going to create a new file so we go sudo nano okay uh, bitcoin dot conf okay and it's gonna ask me for my password okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put tx index equals one enter and then server equals one okay now I'm going to write that into um, this particular uh, folder here Okay, and I'm going to go control X do I want to save that yes I do so Y and then enter okay so now I have a bitcoin.conf file folder there okay. actually I'm not quite sure if that's happened so I'm just gonna okay and I'm just gonna make it um, nano bitcoin.conf so it's just me 
Um, and then we're going to do TX index equals one. And then we're going to do um, server equals one. Troll X. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we have a bitcoin.conf file as well. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, now, now we can start back that back up again. So Bitcoin D Damon, and we'll see here that we now have a brand new cookie file here. Now the importance of this cookie file is that this is how we have how other applications hook into your node. Um, so when we install certain um, pieces of software uh, that sit on top of Bitcoin, this particular cookie file is what allows you to, uh, or, or, or is the bridge between those two applications. So the Bitcoin node and the, um, uh, the software that you're going to install. Okay. So now what we want to do is to create a service file uh, that allows you to start up the uh, Bitcoin Core um, node on the boot of your machine. So at the moment, if I was to shut this down, uh, it wouldn't start up automatically. We want that to start up automatically. So we're going to do this through uh, system control. And essentially, um, we're going to go to the repository for Bitcoin, and that is listed on github.com slash Bitcoin slash Bitcoin. Okay. And we're going to get a service file. So we're going to just go find file. And if you have a look here, we've got a dot service file. Okay. Now, this is the service file that we need, and we're going to edit this file, enable it, and make it run. Okay. So... We said that this was st uh, ha has started, so that's going. Bitcoin's downloading in the background, but now we're going to make it start up uh, when we boot this machine. So, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the raw file itself, and we're going to take this, we're going to copy this location, and we are going to put it into a folder called cd slash etc systemd system. Okay, now it's in here. Now, as I said, remember, anytime we want to uh, edit anything that's not really our home directory, we need to have super user uh, um, privileges for it. So sudo wget, and we're going to download this service file. Okay, so that basically goes out and fetches this service file. So we're going to do that. Okay, so now you'll see in here when we type in ls, there is a Bitcoin service file in this folder here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to edit this service file. So sudo nano bitcoin dot service. Okay. So we can see here that this is the service file that we need to sort of edit. Uh, the exec start is actually not USR bin. The way that you would figure that out is if you open up a new terminal, you can just type in where is Bitcoin D. And you'll notice here it's got USR local bin Bitcoin D. Okay, so we're going to change that to USR local bin Bitcoin D. Now our conf file is not there. Okay, that is actually in home slash Catan slash Bitcoin, uh, sorry, slash dot Bitcoin slash bitcoin.conf and our data directory is actually the same as well so that's home katan dot bitcoin and that's our data directory now as for these things um, now the other thing that we uh, do is when we don't want something active we put a hash in front of it and that's called commenting out so you can comment out certain things that you don't really need so I'm just going to comment those two out because we don't need that uh, and then the user is actually not Bitcoin we're going to run it as ourselves so I'm going to change the name and the group to me and everything else 
is looking good except for this protect home true. So we can comment that one out as well. Okay. So now we've edited the file to our liking. Uh, we're going to go control X and we're going to say yes. And we're going to go e enter. I'm going to shut Bitcoin D down. So Bitcoin CLI stop. Okay. So cause now stopped. And we are now going to enable the service file. So the way that we do that is sudo systemctl enable Bitcoin and d.service. So enter that. So that's now created. And then we're going to start that. So sudo systemctl start Bitcoin d. Okay. So now that has started in the background, hopefully. So you can see now, hopefully, that if you go Bitcoin CLI get connection count, you should be able to get something. And there it is there. Okay, so I've got now five connections. Bitcoin is now active. Now, the other thing that we wanted, we can check if we're seeing things right is the status. So sudo systemctl status Bitcoin D. And we can now see uh, that this has started Bitcoin Daemon. Um, and it's all well and good. And it is active. That's the magic. Um, key here that it is green and it is active. That means it's going on in the background. Okay, so to get out of here, just go Control C, and that will get you back to where you need to go to. Okay, um, now we can test this out to see if this actually works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot the computer uh, and see if this actually starts up on startup. So let's check if that works. So um, sudo we'll just close down everything happy and we'll just reboot okay so we are now in um, back into our uh, computer so well let's see if this works so bitcoin cli get connection count and we can see that it works on startup so now i don't need to type in uh, bitcoin d daemon or anything like that um, it can just be straight um, yeah it, it starts up on startup okay uh, now instead of waiting um, around for this particular machine to boot up. Um, oh, oh, sorry, to synchronize to the network. So let's just check um, where we're at. So get blockchain info. And we can see we are at 186,000 out of the uh, 608,000. We're getting there slowly but surely. Um, but yeah, it's taking its time. So we will continue on. Uh, with a node that I prepared earlier that is already synced. So let's um, go into there. So we'll shut this one down. No need for this. And this is the Ubuntu node box that we're going to be working with that already has the blockchain synced up. Um, that I prepared earlier. Okay, so now we are in a uh, node that starts up, or a machine, sorry, that starts up um, Bitcoin as well. Uh, the other thing that I did want to check though, is if I've done this correctly. Um, just going to go to the hidden files and I think I may have hmm that's probably why anyway so so we have a computer now that starts up on startup uh, sorry <laughs> we have a computer that starts Bitcoin uh, on boot um, 
So the thing that I really want to show you in terms of this particular um, node is let's just check that this is uh, up to the tip. So Bitcoin CLI uh, get blockchain info. Almost there. Uh, I got 39 blocks to go. Oh, sorry. Just under 30 blocks. So you'll see here verification progress. Um, it's almost complete. Okay, so now I am completely synced up and uh, we are now pretty much um, uh, at the chain tip. Um, the I wanted to show you the most interesting command uh, that I think uh, Bitcoin Core has and that is Bitcoin CLI get TX outset info. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to run, but basically this allow this command shows me the number of coins uh, that are on issue at this point in time. Now the reason that this is so significant is because for the first time in human history uh, we have been able to verifiably prove the supply of something um, and that is the number of Bitcoin in circulation. This is a huge step in uh, computing science. In fact, it's a breakthrough in computing science and there it is there. So at the moment, there's roughly 18.1 million Bitcoins on issue as per my node. Okay, And I am able to verify that. This is something that we've never been able to do in the history of humanity and I get shivers down my spine every time I think about this. Um, and what this means is that we have digital scarcity. In fact, we have true scarcity of anything uh, that we can now verify. So this is what's going to change the world. This is the whole reason um, that Bitcoin is so interesting or one of the reasons that Bitcoin is so interesting um, and so I see huge structural changes to society based on this one th this number here that that is it this is all that matters is the fact that there is a that this number will never be above 21 million and I think that that is an absolute breakthrough in computing science. Um, so that's my favorite command of all time.